Now, in recent years, there's been a lot of chat about the Great Wall of China. No, not, not that wall. I'm talking about the Great Firewall of China. Now, there's no doubt about it. China's government maintains one of the strictest and most severe forms of internet censorship in the world today. But what is the main reason that China censors its internet? I believe that many people around the world actually do not fully understand China's reasons for censoring popular social media sites like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a very unique insight that I learned from my many years in China, but most importantly, I'm also going to be talking about how foreign companies enter into the country of China and work hand in hand with the Chinese government to actually receive unrestricted internet access in the country of China today. Now, this is some information that not many people know, but I think it's important as we talk about the very complex situation of internet censorship in China. Hello, everybody. My name is Cyrus Jansen. I'm an American expat and entrepreneur, and I want to welcome you back to the YouTube channel. And as we get started in today's topic, I want to bring you back to a much simpler time in China. This is me in January 2007 in downtown Shanghai. Now, the reason that I want to start our journey here today is that in 2007, social media and the internet were at a very different place than it currently is here in the year 2021. You see, in 2007, not many people really understood the true value of social media. For example, I'll never forget reading this article from April 2007 entitled, The Kid Who Turned Down One Billion Dollars. Now, the kid that was featured in this article is none other than 22-year-old Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook. And in 2007, Facebook was still in its infancy stages. You see, Facebook wasn't really that profitable yet. It hadn't turned into the large advertising monster that it is today and the huge cash cow that it has become. But of course, Mark Zuckerberg had the foresight to look into the future. Fast forward to today, and we now know that Facebook is worth over 700 billion US dollars. Now, when I began my China journey in 2007, this was an amazing time to be inside the country of China. In 2008, the city of Beijing hosted the Summer Olympics. Two years later, the city of Shanghai hosted the World Expo. This was an amazing period of time to be inside the country of China. Unfortunately, China was having a new problem that was developing. Now, I want you to take a look at this graph that highlights the amount of terrorist attacks that happened inside the country of China over a six-year period of 2002 to 2007. You can notice that during this six-year period, things were relatively stable in China. There was not a lot of terrorism that was happening inside the country. However, things drastically changed in 2008. Immediately, there was an increase of 20 new incidences of domestic terror. But fast forward another year, only seven incidences. Unfortunately, 186 Chinese people lost their lives. The worst part about it was the terrorist organizations that were organizing these attacks were using Facebook, a foreign entity operating within the country of China to organize their terrorist activities. Now, the Chinese government immediately went to Facebook and asked for the information of these individuals. Unfortunately for Facebook, they decided not to comply. They said, we have a privacy policy and we are not able to turn over that data, despite the fact that this is a terrorist organization and that Chinese lives are at stake. So China had no other option but to immediately ban Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and any other social media website in China that would not adhere to the local laws. And this was the really interesting thing for me as an expat. Again, when I went to China in 2007, China's internet was a lot more open and free. Western social media sites were all open and accessible to foreigners and Chinese alike, but seemingly overnight that instantly changed and censorship began to get more and more severe. But again, go back and realize what was the catalyst to determine this decision. Again, it's not because China's government is scared that its people are going to discover you know, what's happening in the West. That's one of the most common stereotypes that I hear. Many people argue with me. They say, Cyrus, the reason why they want to block everything from the West is China's government is very scared that its citizens are going to find out about democracy, freedom of speech, the right to assemble, the right to protest. But that's not true. The Chinese citizens actually have a very good idea of what's going on in the outside world. They're very well aware of America, free speech, and all of these rights that we have. Chinese people are actually very educated about the Western world. The primary reason for censorship of these social media sites, again, comes down to national security. 
Now, the interesting thing about this is that we saw the United States do something that was actually pretty much the same. Last year in 2020, President Donald Trump proposed the idea of banning TikTok, the popular Chinese social media app in the United States. Many United States politicians said that TikTok, because it is a Beijing entity, is potentially a national security threat inside the United States. And here's really the interesting insight that I want to share. I do believe that the actions from both China and the United States could potentially give us a preview of what the Internet of the future will look like. For example, many of us believe that when we open our phones, we're instantly connected to one major ecosystem, the World Wide Web. But actually, in the future, what if this Internet experience becomes more fragmented? What if countries from around the world start requiring foreign websites to actually register before their website is accessible in that respective country? It's an, a unique idea, and I think that it is something that potentially could happen to the future of the Internet. So now that we've established the fact that national security is really the major concern with China's government and why they censor these social media websites, I want you to also realize that there is a pathway to actually having your social media network completely open and working in China today. For this example, I'm going to use the popular social media website LinkedIn. The interesting thing is, is that LinkedIn continues to operate in China today unrestricted. You do not need a VPN. But what is the difference? Why is LinkedIn able to operate in China, but the others are not? Well, this New York Times article explains it very clearly. To reach China, LinkedIn plays by the local rules. In this article from February 2014, the executive chairman at LinkedIn, Jeff Viner, shares that there are over 140 million professionals that are working inside the country of China. And they had the goal to connect these Chinese professionals with LinkedIn's community in over 200 countries around the world. LinkedIn, as an American company, certainly stands for freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and does not believe in internet censorship. However, they do believe that adhering to China's local rules is more important. They really believe that they want to connect with Chinese consumers. And they understand that in order to do business in China, you must adhere to the local rules. So they have complied and they are working with China's government. As a result, they are given a green light and LinkedIn is able to operate in China today. Now, one of the things that many people do not know about China is that it is 100% legal for a foreign company to go into China, register with the Chinese government and actually receive unrestricted access to the Internet. To give you a better analogy of how this works, I want you to think of this. This is my American passport, and it is perfectly legal for me as an American to enter inside the country of China. However, it is illegal for me to enter inside the country of China without a valid visa. And that is a very simple analogy that you can use to understand how these companies can go into China and establish themselves with the Chinese government. For example, when you pass through immigration in China, every foreigner is required to fill out this exact arrival card. And this is the information that the Chinese government wants to know from every foreign national. The first thing is they want to know your intended address in China. What hotel or what residence will you be staying at? What's your name, your nationality, your passport, your date of birth? You know, where was your visa given? And most importantly, what is the purpose of your visit? You see, China maintains a very accurate and detailed account of every foreign national that enters into the country. And this is what I want you to think of when you're talking about a company going into China. A company has every right to go into China and actually work with the government and receive access to unrestricted internet. But what they need to do first is find a local partner in China to help them go through this process. They then need to present to China. What's the website? What's the business? What's the industry? What is your purpose of doing business in China? As long as those checks out and you're a legal business, you're able to receive unrestricted internet access in China. But how does a foreign company establish itself with the Chinese government and bypass the Great Firewall of China? Well, the most important thing is that you need to find a company that is not only Chinese, but understands the Chinese market. Now, the three major players for this is China Telecom, China Unicom, and China Mobile, the three largest telecommunication companies that operate inside the country of China today. However, I'd also like to introduce you to a competitive value provider, CDS Global Cloud. 
This Texas-based company, together with their parent company, Beijing-based Capital Online Data Services, offer highly customized solutions for global companies wanting to enter and do business inside the country of China. One of their most popular services is called Global DIA, which is a smart routing internet service for fast access to both local Chinese websites such as Baidu and the Western counterparts. CDS Global's mission is to help companies legally enter into China and to solve their internet needs. Now, I want everybody to know that the video today is a partnership with CDS Global and my channel. I think this message of internet censorship was very important, and this is a topic that I've been wanting to discuss for a while. You have to think about it logistically. There are literally tens of thousands of foreign companies from all around the globe that want to enter into the China market establish themselves at the local level and learn to work with the government and build that market share inside of China. Now, again, I want to end today's video by giving a special thanks to CDS Global for partnering on me to help tell this story about internet censorship in China. If you have a business that's interested in establishing a better internet experience for your business, your website, your company, I want you to take a look at CDS Global. Check out the, link, the information in the description below. And most importantly, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube today. I hope you found this video very informational. And again, the goal of this video is education. I want people to understand that China will play a very vital role in the future of our world economy. We need to be building partnerships, we need to be engaging with China, and we need to be learning to work together. That's certainly the goal of this channel, and I want to thank you so much for spending time with me here on YouTube. I can't wait to see you in next week's video.